Welcome. You have tuned in to The Ties That Bind, our family meeting. My name is Paula and I am your griot, which is simply meant storyteller or historian in ancient Africa. I'm joined with my co-host James, The Bridge, and other co-host Tiffany, our strategizer. And tonight we are talking and talking, and I have James and Tiffany, as usual, and we're talking about Black Girl Missing. And Tiffany is going to moderate tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to her, and we're going to get started so we can get all our talking in. Now, Tiffany, and then we can go to Tiffany, then James, and then and we'll go from there. Hi, everybody. This is Tiffany. Uh, thank you for joining us. I am known as the strategizer or the strategist, <clears throat> and my goal is always is to bring us some actual tangible building blocks that we can use to improve our families, ourselves, and the community at large. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm James. I'm known as The Bridge. I'm here to use myself as a tool to kind of bridge the gap between the differences we have in our families and also our communities. I believe that one day we will see that our problems are more the same than different. That way we can finally come together as a unit. Yes. And, of course, I am your, um, what is it, your griot, and I'm here to your storyteller, your historian. I'm here to add a little light um, because I have a little bit more wisdom uh, to the the topic that we have tonight. And I'm going to say, Tiffany, take it away. All right, so thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to bring this topic to the forefront for discussion because it's something that – it really affects me. I mean, it affects everybody, but it, it kind of hits me in a special way. Um, mm-hmm. And to start it off, I was watching this uh, program about two weeks ago on, I think it was PLC, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to look it up right now. And it was hosted by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart, if everybody is familiar with who she is. You know, she was a girl that was kidnapped, and she was kept against her will for, I think, nine months before the people who had her finally, she escaped them. Um, and she hosted it, and basically they had, I want to say, eight other girls that had been kidnapped and, you know, they were telling their stories and they were talking about one girl in particular who had just been um, kidnapped recently and she just got found her freedom recently. Um, And they were talking about her. She wasn't on the show, but they were talking about her story and their own stories and, you know, things related to people being kidnapped and exploited. And what struck me when I was watching this show was every single person on the panel was blonde hair, blue eyes, with the exception of one. One of the girls was Hispanic, but she had her hair dyed blonde for the show. <laughs> and it, it just struck me that of all the people that are missing in the world, they, they only highlight this one demographic, right? Mm-hmm. And I wondered, right. it made me wonder, you know, what the actual statistics were. So I went online and I started Googling and looking around trying to find if I could even find some statistics on missing persons. And, of course, I found quite a lot. Um, and I'm just going to read you some statistics um, before we kind of jump into the topic. So – This is coming from uh, blackandmissing.org. This is as of 2012. So January 26, 2012, the NCIC, which is a national um, crime database um, that police use, said that there are 679,000 entries as missing persons in the United States as of 2012. Of that number, Mm -hmm. black persons or persons of color make up 33%. Of that number. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the headlines, we're represented in about 13% of the headlines when somebody gets missing. Um, And it's just really surprising to me. Well, it's not surprising, but it's something that it really hurts me to know that our lives are just not valued, even the lives of our children are just not valued. Um, So let's talk about this today and bring it to the forefront and get your guys' opinions um, and maybe share some stories um, and highlight some actual missing persons profiles. Okay. So, um, mm-hmm. um, I'm, go ahead. I, I, James, was that you or you want me to go ahead? Go ahead. That was me. Okay. Well, I, um, I, well, I went on to the Oh, what is that? Oh, that's Gordon. Okay. I went on, uh, I had gone on CNN because I see this and really we can, we can talk about it and we can say how horrible it is. We see it and we never, think about our children missing. But the the data that as of 20, um, I think it was 2017, 2018, 
Well, 75,000 children were missing, and of that, it was like 30, uh, a little bit more, about the same uh, or more of the 33% um, that of the black girls, uh, black women, children. I, I think we're talking about children. So with the children, we're talking about black was, people in general, not just children. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was, you know, it was like almost 30, 40%, and uh, it was, I was, I was a little bit thrown aback at my own, my own, uh, what do you call it, ignorance, because we see it, we talk about it, because a lot of the quick cases, I'm like, uh, something's not right with that. I know she went missing, she went missing as this as strangely, strangely as she came back, and then, but we'll talk about it, but we never think that our children or our, our, Females are uh, are being a uh, part of that, and I think it is because of the media and the television. I know that once they had this girl, and the man was trying to, and she was in a garage, and the man had taken was trying to take her, and he was he had he was fighting her, and he was trying to beat her, and trying to get it in the car. And that took forever. I mean, it was like, oh, it was, but they had the film, and they still, they, to this day, they don't even talk about it anymore. They added us, they, when they put it on, they, uh, they, they said it as though, um, okay, this is just the passing uh, fancy right here, and, and they went on to the next thing. And so I don't know whether my thing in it, well, I'm gonna, I'm, this is my question as we go down the round. How much do we participate in the, the lack of knowledge that is out there or the lack of awareness that is out there about our people, about the shows and all these, these, uh, these things, and they want to fight all the time, they want to do this, they want to do that, and so... I was and I was I was totally shocked, and so I, on that I'm going to turn it over to James because I had I don't want to start because I will go down that rabbit hole and 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 nobody coming out. So James, go ahead. No, I mean everything that you're saying. I mean it is a, a complete shock. My whole view about the whole thing was how mm-hmm. you know how could we start to put ourselves out into the spotlight to where we start to value ourselves a little bit more and we yeah. start to really take care of ourselves a little bit more, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of this could be prevented if we all would come together, so to speak, and actually talk to one another. And, I mean, we could, we could literally have uh, groups uh, of adults walking their kids to school or, mm-hmm. you know, doing other things because uh, I mean, we could schedule stuff like that. Because, right. Because, um, that's that's one thing, especially when I'm riding down the street, when I'm when I'm when I'm uh, seeing kids get on the bus. The main mm-hmm. thing I see are, are little black kids, right, standing or walking. You know, no no adults attending or, or helping. Exactly. Mhm. You know, so I mean, there's 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 a lot to be said because, like you said, it's, it's not just the kids; it's also adults that are being kidnapped for whatever reason. Right. But uh, yes, we, we need to get out here and, and start talking, and we need to probably uh, be in groups with one another and, yeah. and learn and how to defend news. ourselves. Yeah, right. yeah, and I agree with you on that because it's not just the news. I've been watching commercials, and, uh, and it was weird that Tiffany brought this up because I was watching commercials, and they'll show, uh, a lot of times they'll show little light-skinned girls. It's very seldom they'll show... Uh, one with a uh, melanin in their skin, so I'm so serious that brown skin. But then when you do show them, if you, even if they're light skin, they're standing if they're on vacation. The girl is standing out by their uh, by herself. They, there's no family around. If mm-hmm. they, then if they take another shot and they have another black person there, it's a female and she's standing out there by herself. And then they have the black man there. He's standing over there with a group of Caucasians. Or with a Caucasian wife, and you or you don't know if it's a black, if it's somebody who looks uh, something other than white. Uh, you don't know whether he's with her or whether he's not. And so, and with this, I think this is a 
like they say, the miseducation of of a people. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Tiffany, but this is, we're going to have to, they're taking our dollars. And that's why they're, they have so many commercials on television. you got to see things for what they really are and not what uh, feel good or because it makes you feel that little fuzzy feeling because you want, you know, I, why can't we go to sandals? Uh, why can't we go to um, to da 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 instead of looking at the image that they're putting out there of us? Mm-hmm. So um, without getting too deep into, like, what we can do, because we are going to talk about things that we can do and resources right. that we can use, I want to stay focused yeah. on um, the lack of media coverage and the lack of mm-hmm. um, acknowledgement that this is an issue. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I, the next thing I want to do, I want to go ahead and highlight one particular case. So this case, um, the missing person, her name is Randy Marie Garth. Um, okay. She's considered to be endangered at this point. Her date of birth is January 1st, 2001. She's been missing yeah. since August 7th, 2018. Her age today is 18 years old. She was um, found missing from Zanesville, Miss, um, Zanesville, Ohio. There is no case number mm-hmm. active for her right now. Um, she's wow. female, female, black is listed as her race, medium complexion, 5'11", weighs approximately 140 pounds with dark shoulder-length hair and brown eyes. She wears no glasses or contacts, and there are no um, tattoos or markings that, they, that are known. Um, last time she was seen, she was wearing black pants and a black shirt. Um, and if you have any uh, information regarding her uh, missing or her case, you can find her case on blackandmissing.org. That's blackandmissing.org. Wow. Okay. Um, so you- the the, yeah. the biggest thing, the biggest issue that I wanted to highlight is the fact that there is no coverage. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, if you've heard of this little girl, Malia, um, Malia Davis. She actually, we were supposed to do this show last week. We were supposed to record this show. And at that point in time, she was still listed as missing. And she's still listed as missing, but there's been a lot of developments in her case. Um, so I'm going to give her full details of her case in a few minutes, but I'm just going to sum it up right now. Three-year-old girl was with her stepfather. Um, while her mother was out of town attending a funeral, and he uh, called the police stating that he had been kidnapped. Um, he and his one-year-old son were released, but they said, he said that the daughter, the three-year-old daughter, was taken. Um, mm. We know now that most of that story is not true, and it's mm. looking more like homicide than her being missing. But the yeah. point is, I, um, I thought and I appreciate the fact that the media actually did put this out, but mm. what didn't happen until like five days later was an Amber Alert. Now, according to the law, Amber Alerts have to be put out within, like, within two hours of a person being notified that they're missing. So what exactly. I want to know is why did that not happen in this case? Why was the Amber Alert not, mm-hmm. re- not issued until five days after she was um, discovered missing or reported missing? Right. Wow. A, the disparity so, is it's, it's shocking, the disparity between how people of color are treated against mm-hmm. the, the white demographic, you know, that perfect blonde, blue-eyed image. Right. right. But so did they, okay, they, the media put it out there and said, and they didn't ask why there was no uh, Amber Alert because that's no. what they, they try to do that immediately. If they're missing in an hour, that thing, but that's why they have it out there on the, on the, uh, uh, on the what do they call it, the Internet, on the interstates mm-hmm. and stuff, and instantly. Mm-hmm. If they go to the police and they say this girl is missing, last seen X, Y, and Z. Now, the story, that something ain't right with the story, yes, for sure. But if just like they're not looking, they're not putting the Admiral alert, then are they actually looking into the case, trying to see, are they, have they gone to the last person that's seen them, the family and all this stuff? Have they done that? Are they really, did they say, uh, anything about the investigation? Are you asking me? Yeah. Well, yeah, they actually, this story, believe it or not, has actually gotten quite a lot of coverage. Um, I, I don't know yeah, about I the past few heard days. It. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the past few days, but here, you know, in Virginia, there's been quite a bit of coverage about it. Um, oh, okay. Now, that does not answer why there was no Amber Alert or why it wasn't put out in a timely manner because she was reported missing on the Saturday prior to Mother's Day. Mm. And like, like I said, they didn't put wow. the Amber Alert out until the middle of the, the next week. 
Um, oh, wow. You know, like I said, the, you know, the police have already determined that the stories that the stepfather was saying were not true. Um, right. Mm-hmm. To include, he said that his vehicle was stolen, and they, they actually found the vehicle. They actually had footage of him exiting the vehicle at the airport where he was supposed to pick up the girl's mother. So, mm-hmm. you know, that okay. whole story about the car being stolen is not true. Um, right. So, you know, the, you know, they're investigating, trying to figure out what happened. They're searching for the girl's body um, to see if they can find her. Uh, and like I said, this case is looking more like a possible homicide and less a missing person. But yeah. the point is, that's not that's not the point. The point is, this is a name and a face that is a value, that is a, a person of value that we care about and we want to know, right. you know, that the same mm-hmm. resources are being used to find right. our missing our child. Right, our same tax dollars that this man put out right. there for everybody else. Right. right. So Amber Alert. So oh, this this is the data that I have is the most recent data. Some of it's a little bit older, but it's the most recent data that there is. So a study of Amber Alerts from January 1, 2010 to December 31st, 2010 found that a total of 170 out of 173 Amber Alerts, 30% of them were black compared to 47% of whites. Um, wow. Uh, but that still is it's not a fair representation of the um, number of people that are missing. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess what do you feel is the main issue as far as getting those, getting the the public reaction and the law enforcement reaction to be the same across the board, regardless of race and regard, regardless of social economic um, scale and regardless of, you know, what town they're from. Right. Right. Um. Go ahead, James. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how to answer that question. You know, to, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, um, because I mean, we know how it is here. You know, in in this country, as far mm-hmm. as how black people are viewed, and um, of course, they want to tap into the hearts of the majority for the most part, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, they want to they want to make sure. What they got going on, either their the race or whatever, is protected, you know, at mm-hmm. at, 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 at any cost. So right. as far as the majority in this country, you know, I I, I, I can see why they're, they're going to focus on that because they're probably going to get a bigger response on mm-hmm. whoever, they're, whoever they're showing. Just like, uh, for instance, and this is not off topic, but just for an example, mm-hmm. um, like – like hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the majority, uh, a lot, a lot of Caucasian or white people did not listen to hip hop until they heard of Eminem. Mm-hmm. But once Eminem, once they heard Eminem, you know, a lot of them really started listening to hip hop after they seen Eminem. You know, mm-hmm. because I think people, as as a whole, kind of gravitate to what looks like them. At least they should. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so I don't they- know. I'm sorry. And, I'm and sorry. I, I, that part I understand, and I agree with you. That's not wrong uh-huh. at all. But, but I don't agree with that, though. Well, okay, well, uh-huh. that, that can be debated, but the, okay. point, the point that I'm trying to make is the, there's an obvious um, disparity between the media coverage. It, the media coverage doesn't fairly or accurately represent the number of people that are missing. Mm-hmm. If there are 33% mm-hmm. black people missing, then there should be 30, 33% media coverage. If there's 12% Hispanic missing, there should be 12%. Like, it should be equal and fair, you know what I mean? Like, they shouldn't right. ignore people. Like, right now, this little girl, Malia Davis, she's a really pretty little girl. She's caramel color. She's got long, curly hair. She re- she fits that racially ambiguous mold that people yeah. are attracted to. Mm-hmm. You know, people mm-hmm. are attracted to that. And it, it, But if she had been, you know, short hair, you know, nappy hair, dark skin, she wouldn't have gotten the same coverage mm-hmm. or the same acknowledgement. Right. So, mm-hmm. if there, the, you know, it's colorism, it's racism, it's discrimination, and, there, you know, we have to, first of all, discover what it is, what this is, and then we have to find ways to combat it. Right. But I think it's, uh, and I agree uh, somewhat with what James was saying, but I think the majority of the Caucasian, um, I grew up in the 70s, 80s, and I know they were listening to our music. And and they were, but they wouldn't, because of the backlash from other Caucasians, they would do it secretly. It's just like when we were in our house, we grew up in a really weird um, 
a, a different, I don't want to say weird, we grew up in a different family. And we weren't even allowed to listen to, uh, if it had a, a heavy drum beat or, because you know, hip-hop wasn't so, a pump, it, hip-hop was there, but that, that kind of stuff, we weren't allowed to listen to. I remember getting to the high school, and they were just like, that's devil music. And I'm just like, but it, it, I liked it. So what I had to do was, um, you were at church, you know, my fam- my parents did not even want to hear that in the house. If it wasn't a uh, sick call, a uh, call, and, and all that, all that um, the sad stuff on the, on the radio, that was the only thing that was, you know, something that you, that you could listen there. But I would go in my room, put the covers over my head, find a battery for a radio, and, and if you could find a channel that, that played more than just uh, – Caucasian music, we always had it. We, I would go there and listen, but uh, lift up. But the singing out loud, there wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't just the Caucasians. It's because now it's more prevalent, and everybody wants to be more as technical and ambiguous. Because now I was watching a show, and uh, it was called Billions. And I know I don't want to go too far with it. But there's a woman on there, and I kept looking at her. She was supposed to be black. She was really dark, but her features, her, everything did not look uh, African American. And I was just like, so I thought, okay, I'm going to look her up. I couldn't find her on the cast members, anything. So I'm thinking that they put dark makeup on her to make her uh, be more attractive so that we can go there and see a uh, few of us because they only had two on there a few of us on there, and we could, uh, you know, want to watch the show. It's a good show. I, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, take out of that. But we are, I, I think we're going to have to, well, I know you haven't gotten to the whys and the what's and stuff, but I think the hip-hop and the, our men have uh, always been in, I remember I was I had a, a good Sometimes we talked about race, sometimes we didn't, but it, we did it in a way that not to make them feel uncomfortable with what I'm saying. If my, if my voice is cutting up, let me know because uh, I'm talking uh, on wi- I'm speaking on my Wi-Fi right now. And so we were talking one day, and she was, because uh, she was from Florida, and really she, I don't even think, she, she was racially ambiguous as far as I was concerned. She had a big booty. She her skin was olive, you know. But she had the straight hair. She was doing all this stuff. But she uh, remember. I remember her. We we got into a race conversation, and and you know I'm the one. I'm bringing it out there. You know I can take what you got to say as long as you're being uh, country and you're being you know whatever. And she says, you know my parents. Um, they said, um, I, I used to love Michael Jackson. And I told my my, my, my dad, I said, I'm... I think we might, hello? I think we might have lost Paula, so I'm yeah. just going to go ahead and continue on with the with the oh. statistics. Um, so uh, I want to highlight... But y'all can't hear me for real? You just can't make it. <laughs> you just can't make it. I was trying to like... Yeah, and I was telling you that. guys... Uh, if we got uh, cut up because I was talking on my Wi-Fi. Uh, okay, and oh. I didn't know until you said that, I didn't know you couldn't hear me. I, I don't know what all you heard, but it, 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 it was okay for – she was – I was talking about my friend. Did you get, did you get that part? We did. I, I want to just go ahead and, um, go, you know, bring it back to the topic, though. That is the topic. Okay. Well, it's not about missing, but it's, we're talking about why we're missing. Is that was that not what we were talking about? Mhm. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you were telling your story. Oh no, I was just saying she was saying that she wanted to marry Michael Jackson, and they were her parents were telling her, "No, you can't uh, marry a black man." You gotta, she was like, "He got he, but he had some money." And it was like, well, as long as he's got, uh, as long as he's rich, you know, da 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 da. And so that is, and she was being, I couldn't get angry with her 
because that was just her story. You know, so I don't know. I want to, uh, my thing is, how are we receiving it? What are we doing? Are we calling and making sure that the police stations are doing their job? Even if this happened in Virginia, are we calling and saying, um, I heard about so and so, so and so, so and so. What are you all doing? I'm in Alabama, or I'm in Canada, or I'm in. Mississippi or I'm in uh, uh, Florida or wherever, and I want to know what are you all doing? And calling our state representatives and saying, how do we do? How are we handling this? What are we doing about the the black girls going missing in our state? Mm-hmm. So I, I agree with I agree with that. Some what what James said, and and well, basically he it was true what he said, but it's just there was another angle that I wanted to bring in. So go ahead. Okay. Um, right now, I want to go ahead and highlight another missing person. Um, her name is Mahendra Faye Davis, 35 years old. Um, she was last seen Thursday, 2000, um, Thursday, December 27, 2018, at about 4:45 p.m. Police say that she dropped her children off at her mother's house in Glen Oaks of Baton Rouge. Uh, she then left her home in a white Dodge Challenger. Her family doesn't know where she was headed. After she left her uh, mother's house, the unoccupied vehicle was found on Scenic Highway and 72nd Avenue. Um, this woman was about five foot three, um, between five foot three to five foot five, and weighs about 150 pounds. If you have any knowledge about her whereabouts, you can contact the Baker Police Department. Um, her, the number there is 225-775-6000, extension one. Um, so yeah, there definitely, is, there definitely is, there are things that we can do um, I think there's a specific incident that happened while I was still living in Hawaii, and it wasn't a missing person. It was actually a child that was burned horrifically by her stepmother. Um, wow. The little girl was a military dependent. She had one parent in Texas, her mother, and her father was living in Hawaii. And um, she had suffered all types of abuse at the hands of her father and her, her stepmother. And basically, she showed up in the hospital. Um, the mother was told that she had a small a burn on her. But when the mother actually got a hold of the, the doctors, the, the little girl was burned over like 90% of her body. And what they, think, what they think happened is the stepmother was pouring boiling water over her. Um, now, again, okay. it's not a missing person, but the point is I was living in Hawaii at the time. Not a single news outlet in Hawaii covered the story of this little black girl. So wow. I, personally, I personally called. When, that, when I didn't get answers on, on phone calls, I hit them up on Twitter and on Facebook publicly. Mm-hmm. What is, why is this story not being told? This happened yeah. here mm-hmm. in this state. Why is this story not being told? Mm-hmm. So I asked a bunch of questions. You know, I sent a bunch of emails and sent a bunch of letters. And finally they started covering the story, but only, you know, they, they'd give it like the last five minutes of the news day, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> of the news sec hour. They'd give it the last five minutes. Um, but they did. It was more than nothing. It was more than nothing. Um, right. My point is, you know, it's easy for people to get caught up in that. Well, they don't look like me, so it's not important. But it is important. This is right. a child. You know, this, is someone, right. this is someone's child. Um, I get it. I get it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there, there, that is something that can be done. Paula's exactly right. You know, you can call. And calling police and asking the police what they're doing may or may not get you anywhere, but what you really want to hit is the news media, the radio stations. Call them mm-hmm. and ask them, yes. hey, I'm a, I am a citizen in your city. This is a news show that I watch. Why is this not being covered? Right. Um, it, hold right. them accountable and let them know that people are watching. And I say do mm-hmm. it publicly because, you know, you can send an email, but they can easily ignore, ignore an email. Because right. I sent several right. emails that didn't get answered. But when I went on Twitter, then I got a response. Mm. Um, so uh, that's, that's just something. So what's your, what are your thoughts on that, James? I mean, I, I mean, I, I agree. It should get more coverage. I mean, without a doubt, and and as kids, you know. So I mean, I, I believe it should touch everybody, but the fact is, it's not touching everybody. But I mean, could we could we do more to get the information out? Yes, I think there's there's a whole lot that needs to be done uh, within mm-hmm. our own community by itself to. Uh, and me personally, I think policing our communities a little bit better will help, you know. Mm-hmm. But and, and and calling whoever you need to call, call the news station, call the radio, especially the radio stations. Um, mm-hmm. 
that that the neighborhood supports already. They mm-hmm. should be covering this information. And every now and then I, I hear, like, an Amber Alert on the radio stations. But, I mm-hmm. mean, it's definitely not enough, and it doesn't even add up to what's actually going out, going on out there in the, uh, in the neighborhoods itself. So I don't exactly. know what else we could do. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as getting the word out there, you're absolutely right. There's other, there's also other steps that you can take. Um, there's another website I want to give you. The first one I gave you was blackandmissing.org. This one is blackandmissinginc.com. So it's a different website. Um, this one is actually um, a little bit bigger website, and there's a lot more resources on there. And if you actually go to that website, they have a resource page that can help you if you find you have a missing person, things that you can do. Well, first, there's things to help prevent um, someone from becoming missing, and then there's also things that you can do if you find yourself in a situation. Hello? Are you out there? Yes. Um, There's also things you can do if you find somebody, one of your loved ones are missing. Um, Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things and easiest things that people can do is getting your children's ID, an ID kit done. So yeah, okay. I, um, I, I, so, I sort of missed the, what you said, Tiffany. So can you uh, 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 go ahead? Okay. So there are, like I said, there are some things that you can do. The resources that you can take. Um, one of one very important resource or one very important tool that you can take is getting your child's identification. Um, there's a kit that you can get through Black, uh, Black and Missing. Inc.com. You can order a ID kit, which will basically give you a little ID card that gives you a current you can a current picture of your photo. You can do fingerprints, um, ID cards, different things like that, so that if your child does uh, end up missing, you have a current photo on hand that you can give to the police that has your full description. You know, it makes it easy. Mm-hmm. You, you don't realize first of all your kids grow super fast. This is something yeah. I'm learning first. Mm-hmm. Kids grow super fast, and it, it's easy to mistake those things. <clears throat> right. <little> details. <laughs> Excuse me. So this will help you as a resource um, if your child should go missing. You have the information handy and readily available. And it's something that you can update every six months so that you, it's always current. <clears throat> um, if you should be unfortunate enough to have a family member go missing, there are things that are available. There's a missing person's checklist, and it basically tells you it takes you through step by step all the information that you need to have available and the um, steps that you that you can take as a family member to help bring your family member home. So just to read a couple of things, it covers basic information. So it has a place where you fill in their full name, their date of birth, any nicknames, um, <clears throat> the previous or current address, if they are old enough to be employed, who their employer is, uh, or former employer. It gives you a space to fill in all their physical description. To include facial hair, t- uh, tattoos, birthmarks, all those things are covered in here. Also, mm-hmm. it covers different types of habits that they might have. Because um, um, p- missing persons are not all, you know, birth to 12 years old. Sometimes they're elderly. Elderly people go missing just as easily as younger people go missing. But it may be something yes. as simple as, you know, maybe they have Alzheimer's or something, and they get confused, and they just end up in the wrong part of town. Well, you can put mm-hmm. down, you know, certain habits that they have or personality traits that they have to make them easier to identify. So if they mm-hmm. should end up missing, it makes people it makes it easier for people to spot them. Yeah, it gives you um, <clears throat> a spot to list their clothing, and it actually mm-hmm. breaks down all the types of clothing items because in the heat of the moment, when your adrenaline is racing, your mind is racing, you might not think about. Their, their entire outfit. You might think about their shirt color or their pants color, but you might not think about the color of their socks or their shoes or if they're wearing gloves. Mm-hmm. And these things are on this checklist to kind of jog your memory to get you to mm-hmm. focus on those things so that if those things mm-hmm. do exist, you remember to put them down. Yes. Right. Um, there's a space for planned activities. So if your family was planning on doing an event or a trip or something, um, something that somebody might actually show up to, um, the, you know, these are things that you want to write down. Like on Thursday, we had planned a family photo. So the police mm-hmm. know, okay, well, on this, this coming Thursday, they might end up in this area because they may not be missing. They may not just, just not be answering their phone. And right. maybe they're going to show up at this event, you know. So these are things that you don't typically think about that are very yeah. important to log down in case, mm-hmm. um, in the event that somebody is missing. 
Um, it covers everything from their physical health condition, any medications they might be taking, people who they might contact or who they've been in contact with. These things are super, super vital um, and very mm-hmm. important and easy to overlook. Um, wow. And I just want to go ahead and highlight the Black and Missing Inc. Black and Missing Foundation Inc. phone number in case I haven't mentioned it already. Their phone number is one eight seven seven nine seven Bamfi. That's B A M F I. Bravo Alpha Mike Foxtrot India for my military personnel. Um, mm-hmm. You can call them to get information or to actually give them information if you think you if you think you see or know somebody who might be a missing or excluded person. You can contact mm-hmm. them. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry, I have allergies. I am. Mike ready. So. No, that's okay. <laughs> we understand. But I um I but really uh, we're doing this, and uh, honestly, I'm I'm. I am, I never, I don't, I, there's something that I don't put in the in the front of my mind because maybe it's because cause we were talking about this because we're always talking about something. But I remember in one of our conversations we were talking about because our parents, we weren't allowed to, there are a lot of things, if we, if we went past a certain point, uh, it was because we were sneaking or, or they weren't paying attention right then, but trust me, you got silenced, oh, they were coming to get you, and, and, and you were going to be punished for going outside of that rim and the things that you're talking about. And that is, but we're going to, uh, I am, I am, I think I'm more concerned about my mind thought in because that's something that you really, when you hear kids are being missing, that's not something that really comes up in my mind there's, that there's, there's a, or kids or, or anyone, uh, black, white, or indifferent. It never comes up in my mind that they could be black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't know why. Because, that's, that's, why, that's, that's, I, because that's not the imagery that you're shown. Imagery is very yeah. important. We've talked about this before. We've talked about this on other topics. Imagery is very, very important. Um, the yeah. the mm-hmm. eye is a very, very powerful tool. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the, the mind and eye connection is a very, very, it's a very powerful connection. Yes. And yes. what you see and what you don't see has a huge impact. On, has a huge impact. Mm-hmm. What you see has a huge impact, and what you don't see has a huge impact. And right. not seeing children that look like you and I, or women that look like you and I, or men that look like James, that has an impact. Not seeing those people in a positive yes. light has an impact. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. I can't. That is, I and I know this is. I'm making this personal, but even I went through that as a child, and really for a long time, I was always scared, and I was always thinking that something was going to happen. I would have dreams that somebody was going to kidnap me, and it was only until I got older that I realized that it wasn't. It, it wasn't strange or danger. It wasn't someone that she didn't look like she would do anything to me. She, just, she came up, and I was. I'm playing in the backyard, and I don't know what I was doing, just stuff that we just did all the time. And I don't know where my parents were. I don't know what happened. Maybe my dad wasn't there because they were always on us. And I think I had gotten too close to the road or something. And she pulled over, and she was just like, uh, hey, uh, and she, I, I can't remember what, what exactly she said. She said, "My mom, your mom told me to come and pick you up. But I'm like four or five. You know, somebody tells you that their mom came to pick you up, and Tiffany and I were talking about this because mm-hmm. we want us to be ca- cautious about or conscious about what's going on, but you you still have to know that everybody is not uh, is not going to be in your corner. It's not going to be for your child. I don't care whether they're black, white, or indifferent. They're not mm-hmm. going to be the ones that that are uh, looking at your children in a childlike state. They're not looking at that. And I don't know what this woman was doing, and I got in the car with her. And I don't know what made me start. I remember getting scared. I remember because I think it was it was daylight when she picked me up, and it was mm-hmm. almost we were there, and I was in the room. She had put me in the back room with some other kids, and I, I wasn't one of the ones who liked to talk to people like that. I talk now, <laughs> but then I didn't. But I remember sitting there, I was crying, and I was, just, and I don't know if she was coming. I don't know what made her take me back home. It was dark. And I remember she dropped me off on the side of my house, 
And when she dropped me out of the she, she I don't remember her saying anything. This is a child like state and I was probably uh scared. And I remember running around the mm-hmm. house and then I saw I remember as we I turned the corner to go into the yard to the house because now I'm feeling safe because I'm closer to home. And I see the police out front, uh, and then my mom looked over as I was coming up the driveway. She's, uh, she's, um, she's crying, and she was asking me where I was, and I don't remember. I, all I can remember is that I didn't have the words to say to her. And I remember mm-hmm. we went in the house, and uh, I don't remember ever talking to the police. And at that point, my mother t- never talked about it again. And I mm-hmm. guess that's why it went out of my mind. And that that would have been that would that that would have been that that was a bell that can never be and that was why I was having all those dreams that somebody would come and kidnap you or do whatever because it was in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. So right. we have to. Yeah, this, go ahead. That, actually, um, that it brings up some things that I want to cover. Um, that, that you brought up some things that I really want to make sure that I cover. Um, before we mm-hmm. get too far away from um, I'm like I don't want to change change the topic no, no, of what no. you're talking about. I want to keep with what you're saying because it brings to mind some things that I wanted to say later. So um, yeah. some things that Paula talked about in her story rung some serious bells for me. That I, I made notes of it, but I want to make sure I say it right now because this is when it applies the most. It's very mm-hmm. important. Like now, nowadays people don't have the ability to be with their kids 24-7. It's very difficult. James right. brought up some great, um, some great ideas like using your neighbors, maybe coming up with some sort of rotation. Like here in my neighborhood, when you know when school's about to get out, because half the parents in the neighborhood are at that bus stop. They're right. really, really good about that. They're really good about it. And if there's a network on Facebook for our our neighborhood, and a lot of the moms and, and fathers are on there, if somebody's kid is acting up, your are hey, whoever the parent is of so-and-so, I'm at this address, I need to speak with you. And they use those resources. And they help take right. care of each other's kids. Everyone helps take care of each other's kids. And I know that doesn't exist everywhere, and it can't exist everywhere. But one thing yeah. that is super duper important is that parents talk to your children and let them know what to do if something yes. happens. Yes. One thing that my mom used to do when we were little, we moved a lot when we, when we were little. Mm-hmm. And that's a, you know, that's a topic for another day. But at one point, I was in a different school every school year for a couple years stretch. Right. And one thing that my mom did is she would always, when we had a new phone number or in a new address, she would make up a song and make us learn our phone number and our address. That's and she true. always knew she, and she would test us and she would ask us, what's our phone number? What's our address? What's my name? Because it's, there's a lot of children, you'd be surprised if you ask a child, three or four years old, what their parent's name is. Right. A lot of them don't know what their parent's name is. They know that they're, they're mommy or daddy, but they don't yeah. know their parent's full name. And mm-hmm. they don't know their parents' mm-hmm. phone number. You know, they don't know where their parent works. Those things right. are important because yeah. if something should happen to your child and they manage to get away, they're going to need yeah. to be able to tell somebody who they belong to. Exactly. Maybe they get access to a phone. They can call you. And children mm-hmm. should know what to do in the event of an emergency. Um, I was right. talking to Paula a couple days ago on this topic. <clears throat> this video that my husband showed me, and it was a little girl um, – I don't know her race, and that's really not important. Um, yeah. She was walking home in her neighborhood by herself, and there was a car that was following her. And this was picked up on a neighbor's um, camera. Like, you know, people, some, some people have security cameras around their house. Well, this mm-hmm. security mm-hmm. camera caught this entire thing that happened. So she was walking home, and she looked completely normal. All of a sudden, her body language changed, and it's like you could tell that she sensed there was some danger. And right. she looked over her mm-hmm. shoulder, and she saw that this vehicle was following her. So she started mm-hmm. walking a little bit faster. And when she sped up, the vehicle sped up. Mm. At a certain point, she came to like a – this all happened. I'm explaining this, and I'm probably going to take a minute to explain it. It all happened in like 15 seconds. It was very fast. Um, yeah. She got to a pickup truck, a really big truck, and she used that pickup truck for cover. She hid behind that truck while that vehicle passed. The vehicle realized – the driver realized that they lost her, so they sped up and went up the block and turned around to try to catch her. And as soon as she saw that that vehicle was away from her, she ran to a neighbor's house. And that probably saved her life. Yeah. Um, it's important that you tell your children that their feelings mean something. Their emotions mean yeah. something. If, if yeah. they feel unsafe, they need to know what to do. It's okay mm-hmm. to run away if you feel unsafe. You yeah. Know? Right. Um, yeah. Another thing that we get away from is talking to our neighbors. Your children yeah. should know who your neighbors mm-hmm. are. 
mm-hmm. because maybe something happens and you're not home, but your neighbor is, and they should know you can go to this house if something is wrong. Mm-hmm. Right, and then call and then call me from that place. You know, they should mm-hmm. know that they have that. You know, they're not alone, and they can get help if they need it. Um, right. There was another instance. So this actually is a story. It didn't happen to me, but it happened close to me, adjacent to me. So I was in elementary school. Um, this is in North Carolina, and I was I wasn't walking to school. I rode the bus, but the bus dropped us off like a block or two away from the school, and then we had to walk the rest of the way. And while we were walking, a guy tried to grab one of the girls that was walking in our group and she had a cast on her arm and the only reason she got away is because his hand slipped on her cast but it took like a chunk of the plaster out and oh, God. that was the first time I, I was probably like seven I was really little but I remember it I had mm-hmm. never even like the concept of someone taking me or taking somebody away it was something yeah. that was completely foreign to me I had no yeah. idea that that was something that could happen um, right. So it's important. Mm-hmm. You don't want, you know, you don't want to destroy your children's innocence, but you have to protect mm-hmm. them. And one of the best ways to protect them is to give them information. Yeah. Because not everybody yeah. is nice and kind, and you mm-hmm. shouldn't blindly trust every person. Yeah. You know, you you, you want right. them to feel that they're safe enough to approach people or to be approached. But in the, re- the reality is, killers look just like everybody else. Yeah. Rapists look just like everybody right. else. Child molesters look just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you have they have to know trust your instincts and this is where you can go if you need help. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I mean that's 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 true because what we don't I, I, I think as an adult, sometimes you forget how you felt in an awkward situation when you were a child and mm-hmm. you you go into this mode. And I see this because I have nieces and nephews, and now we have one that's in our faces all the time because she's always, she's right there. It's just like James and Tiffany are my nieces and nephews. Now I've got a great niece, and she is just like, and I watch everything that she does, and when she does things, it brings up things in me. And so kids are, Mm -hmm. we can't just pretend that they're not feeling what they feel. You know, it took me a long time. It, it, you have to be able to identify. I'm, I had my nephew with me when I was in Dallas. My nephew, my niece, and my nephew, Madison and, and Xavier. And I remember we were in the car, and I was uh, arguing with uh, Joe. And you all remember Joe? She was in the front seat. Mm-hmm. I was taking her to work, and she was just slow about everything. Everything was just. And I was telling her, and I was telling her, I said. And she went in the store, she came back, and she had one thing. And so we started fussing. That, that's off topic. I started arguing with her, telling her, I can't leave you in there, and you got one thing. I said, I gave the money, I gave it to you. And so when she went back in the store to get another, and uh, Madison said, do you, do you hate uh, um, um, Joe? I said, no. And then I had to think because my mind had to go somewhere else because these are children. Because they were like four, mm-hmm. and if they were like three and four. They weren't even four or five. They were like three and four. And I said, no. I said, you know, sometimes how you argue with your brother. I said, you know, you know how, I said, do you hate him? No. I said, it's just a disagreement. You know, and you have to find words for them to understand. I had to learn how to communicate to them in a place where, they could under so that they could with certain kids will get things quicker than others. And so we have to learn mm-hmm. how to when your face when your child's face changes or when you go some and people say, I didn't know that it happened but how do you have a child in the house and these devastating things happen to them and you don't see their whole demeanor change? That's because you weren't paying mm-hmm. attention. Right. And, and so, my guess and- Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't. No, want to no, no. I was just. I was going to turn it over to you. But go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say that we talked about this before. You know, our family in particular has had difficulties seeing children as whole people, and yeah. understanding that that children are experiencing everything that we experience. They just don't have frame of reference or the words to articulate yes. what they're feeling. Exactly. And it's very. Yeah. It's important for you to understand that children are present. And they see everything that's happening, and they're experiencing everything that we're experiencing. They, but they need yeah. your guidance to understand and process what they're seeing and what they're experiencing. And if there have been things that are traumatic within the family, you have to yeah. pay credence to that. You have to you respect the fact that this 
person is also present and they have needs that got to be attended to. Um, right. And just maybe, right. Um, another thing I want to talk about, um, this is something that you can actually do with your children. Number one, make your children learn their address. Make your children learn their phone number. But another thing that I yeah. learned as a pet owner that I realize is, is also valuable as a parent, take your children for walks around the neighborhood. And I never understood yeah. this as a pet owner, but I know now, I understand now. Because right. if you take your children for walks around your neighborhood, exactly. it makes them familiar with it. And yeah. then if they should happen to get lost, they know where they're at. They can get home. So exactly. take, them, right. take them for walks, you know, take them around the neighborhood, show them how to get in and out of the neighborhood, show them how to get to mm-hmm. specific points or specific locations, show them how yes. certain streets yes. connect so that they understand that. So that if something should happen and they end up missing or they end up lost or someone tries to take them and they have to run, they know where they're running to. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like I said, I learned this as a pet owner. So, you know, I don't have pets anymore, but if it, when I did have pets, I always made sure mm-hmm. that I walked them through the neighborhood, I walked them yes. different directions, and yes. I always show them, you know, this is how, if you get lost, this is how you get home. And I've had yes. my dog mm-hmm. get out several times, but they always knew how to find their way back home. And, yes. and that's very, it's very important to, to teach your children. That's a cocoa bean, how, yeah. But ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to teach them. That, that's how they learn. You walk, take them for a walk and show them, this is our street. This is how yes. you get to this location. Mm-hmm. This, like Maybe there's a, a corner store or something that's near your neighborhood that could be a landmark. Exactly. This is how you yes. get here. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you need to get here, to get help, mm-hmm. you can go here and use the phone. Yes. Call this number to get to me. Yes. Right. And those things and are perishable. So don't think that you can do this one time and that's it. You know, these are things that you need to drill with your kids. If yes. something happens, yes. this is what you do. This is where you go. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is how you get there. And show them. You know, you you. I remember when you said that, I remember Madison, uh, Joe had gotten out and and the people would pass so close to the car. And then I'm thinking, because I'm thinking differently now than when I was in the car with myself. When you got children in there, you got to take care, you got to make sure that they're safe. And I'm just like, okay. And she was smiling and she was looking at him and I was just like, I said, we somehow we got on the conversation and I said, see, I said, you can't be, I said, everybody that smiles at you doesn't mean you will. I said, it's something, I said, just like that guy got too close to our car, I said, what do you do? If something happens, I said, if something happens when we're in the car and I want, I, I need to get away, and maybe if, let's just say he hits the window or he tries to open up the door or he breaks the window and I'm trying to get away, if something is going on on the outside, I want you to get on the floor. And I'm sitting there and I'm telling him this and I'm thinking, I don't know whether they're going to get this. And I don't want them to be scared. I want them to be knowledgeable. And right, right. I look back at Madison and I was just because I saw her move. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm, pra- I'm practicing. And I was just like, oh, I said, okay. And, and we talked about it so that she wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something that was fearful to her that she, it was something that, so that I, so that you can help me to help you so that I can mm-hmm. get out of here. So I was telling them so I can get out of the situation and not worry about that something happened to you. So that's the safest place for you to get if we're in the car. And when we were at home, I started telling her stuff like that. And I remember teaching them consequences because they would do things. And I'm just like, okay, we're not doing this anymore. I said, there are going to be consequences. And I remember telling them this every day. And I'm just like, oh, my God, if I tell them this one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. And I, was, I remember I came out of my room because I had given them, um, Regina, had, uh, my sister, had sent them a whole bag of candy. And I was just like, mm-hmm. okay. I don't want them not to have what they have, but I know whenever they get something sweet, they go over the top. So I'm just like, okay, you can get two sweets every day. I said, and that's it. I said, so we're going to count them. So I learned, I taught them how to count with that. So you're going to have 14 pieces, and he's going to have 14 pieces. I said, and when we wake up in the morning, because this is nighttime, so you don't eat anything at the candy at night, I said, we wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I count your, your candy if it's less than 14 pieces. I said, then you're not going to eat any candy today. I said, you're going to have to pay the consequences. And I said, she said, it's, and she says, is, um, is uh, gum, is that sweet? And I said, yeah, that's the sweet. So what, can, I, what, can I eat my gum in the morning? I said, well, that's one. I said, so 
That means you only have one more to left before the day. I said, I'm going to let you make that decision. And I said, um, you, you don't have to pay if you, if you do it and you don't put it where you have to put it, and you're going to have to pay the consequences. And I walked out one day, and I left them in there, and they were on my computer. And I heard her say, she was kept looking at her candy, and she was saying something to herself, and she said, let me see if I want to pay the consequences. And so <laughs> she was getting it. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. don't, don't uh, think that they're not getting it. It just has to be something just like, um, and we're going to talk about this, because I talk about Alea all the time, and so you have to know that she is. this is something near and dear to my heart because James and Tiffany were near and dear to my heart, and now they got this little, this little munchkin. And so she was sitting there, and she bumped her head. And but at this point, sometimes I saw her, and she, her feelings were just totally hurt because the mom laughed at her, and she was, just, and I knew that she was feeling a certain way. And I was looking at her, mm-hmm. and she was looking, and she was crying, and Tiffany says, "Well," uh, and she had this little toy, and she was talking to her, and I think that took her mind off of it because she looked at the tape, looked at the, the thing that she had hit her head on, and then she said, "Did you hit your head?" And she took her hands and she put it on top of her head. She said, yeah. And she was telling them she's one year old. She was telling her where she had hit her head. And so after a while, it was like she was sucking. She was she was trying to get everything out of that she could, all that attention that she could. And then she said, oh, I'm so sorry you hurt your head. What if you hurt your head? And then now it's not at the top of her head. It's on the side of her head. But she understood at one year old, this was her head. So these are things mm-hmm. that we have to Sometimes you, we have to learn, we, we have kids for us to see ourselves sometimes. So we can mm-hmm. go back and remember that I was there one time. And so mm-hmm. I, this is what I, I see her, and this is what I get, garner from it all. And so when she's doing, Tiffany is saying that we have to be more, we have to, has to be something consistent every day. You're going to have to do this all the time. You're going to have to, this is something that, it's not fussing at them, but putting in the head that this means that. So now she knows that a head mm-hmm. means her head because you're constantly talking at her. So I'm going to stop talking, but, yeah, I just uh, when you said that, that just remind, reminded me of her hitting her head the other day. <laughs> yeah, she was yeah, hurt. What you say, Jane? No, I said I think it's important for everybody to educate themselves too. As for, uh, yes. as the parents need to educate themselves about what to do, yes. just as much as they need to educate the children yes. on, on what to do. Because uh, mm-hmm. I think that's very important. And also, yes. uh, different think of different options like uh, uh, maybe like teen or get them into certain things like band or something like that. Yeah. Or even self defense. You know, something that mm-hmm. people will where you can get them meet other people. That's there, yes. so people can get to know who your who your child is. You know, yes. just 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 a good way of communicating and also protecting yourself and your and your children. Yes, mm-hmm. that's true. And because we gotta these, protect our kids. Mhm. And uh, it, like I said, you know, I, I acknowledge that it, you know, times of rough, it's hard. Parents are not able to be home with their kids like they want to be, but be as present as you can. You know, go up to mm-hmm. the school. Go to their mm-hmm. program. Let the, let people know who you are. Let them know that you're not there to play and that you're yes. there to yes. to sponsor, not sponsor, okay. but to speak for your children. Um, yes, mm-hmm. it's, it's very important. I, I think that, in uh, at the risk of getting off topic, it's important for them to see you and know that you're not that one to play games with because your children yes. will get better scared in the long run because they know exactly. that if you don't, if they don't, Mama Pulley's coming up there. I'm coming yes. up there, right. and it ain't gonna be it, nothing it, nice. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So it's important. It's very important to let you know let those administrators know that this is who I am. This is my child, and I'm going to be here to make sure that they get what they need. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. If you live in an area where um, there are other parents with children that are the same age, it's difficult to get to know people these days. But reach out and say, "Hey, I noticed you have a son or a daughter that's my child's age. If mm-hmm. I take them to the bus stop on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, will you take them on Tuesday and Thursday? Just to make sure that somebody's there." You know, make right. sure, make sure right. that you're not by themselves. Limit people's exposure to your children. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to highlight one more missing person before we get too far along. Her name yeah. is Phoenix Coldon. Um, if I'm mispronouncing it, please forgive me. It's C O L D O N. Um, she was 23 yes. at the time that she was missing. Um, she was a junior in college studying at U S 
UMFL. She left wow. home on a Sunday afternoon in her black Chevy Blazer. Her vehicle mm-hmm. was found two and a half hours later in a vacant parking lot in East St. Louis. The mm-hmm. engine was running and her purse was still inside. Anything oh, with any wow. inform- anyone with information about Phoenix Coldone is asked to contact the St. Louis County Police or Crime Stoppers. Um, there's a $1,000 reward for any information that leads to her um, being found. There's also mm-hmm. a Facebook page. Um, it's facebook.com pages slash missing dash phoenix dash cold on. So if you have any information that could lead to her whereabouts, please reach out to those locations. Yeah, and we'll put it on the on the website. I, I, I generally, I've just been putting it on the, um, what's that uh, one that we, the, the podcast, but I'm going to start putting it on the on Facebook, on the on something on Facebook, uh, and I'm going to put it on the website and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. But, yeah, so if you're trying to write all this stuff down, we're going to have it there for you. And we'll have – I want to start putting this in the, in the archive. So mm-hmm. if you want to go back and look at something later that you missed, that you can go and, and, and do – well, we already have the archives in the – in the podcast, we, I don't know whether we've done that in Facebook or in, uh, on YouTube and stuff like that. I don't know whether you can or not on YouTube, but we'll just be conscious of, of doing that. When she said that, I was in my mind, I know the first thing I'll be doing is trying to write stuff down or trying to get things, but we will, we will have that. Right. So um, I want to – I'm reading to, to make sure I didn't miss, out and miss any steps that people can actually take. So we talked about um, – Showing your children safe places in the neighborhood, showing them, showing them, you know, landmarks in the neighborhood they can go to for help if they need to. Um, mm-hmm. Make sure that you talk to your children about strangers, okay? Yeah. Everyone has this image of what the bad guy looks like, but like I said before, the bad guy looks just like you and I. So it's important to talk to your children, let them know that it's never okay to go anywhere with someone that they don't know. It's never okay if someone says they lost a puppy, they need your help. If they say, I need directions, whatever, it's not okay to go anywhere with a stranger. And if anyone tries to get them to go anywhere, they need to know how to, you know, how to get away, where to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It's, it's, and, it's, 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 and, uh, and uh, one of the things that Paula was talking about with our cousins um, that she did but probably didn't realize it is role playing. It's not enough to just tell them what to do. Come up with a scenario and mm-hmm. – so, you know, mommy's going to be the stranger and daddy's going to be a police officer. If something happens, what do you do? And actually have them act out what to do because actually physically doing it builds what's called muscle yes. memory. And yes. muscle memory is much stronger than your, your mental memory. It, it help, teaches your body how to react if something yes. should happen. Yes. Instead of um, getting afraid and, 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 and shutting down because you don't know what mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. Uh, another thing that you can do, and you can find these – classes within your community. Um, Self-defense is one thing that you can do. Um, Also, you can actually teach your children how to break out of certain types of holds. Like if someone is holding your wrist, you can teach your child how to break break free of someone holding their wrist. Um, Mm -hmm. It's something that that you can role play with them. You can practice with them. Teach teach them where they can strike someone to hurt them if they need to get away. You know, everyone knows that. I didn't stop about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that men have a sensitive spot between their legs. You can kick them there. But not as many people know that you can kick a woman in the same place and have the same effect. Yeah. So, you know, teach your children Teach your children that this, these are things that you can do if you need to get away. Right. And in certain positions that they have you in, they, they have the eyes. They have the, you know, you have this, that, and the other. Places that, that's vulnerable that you can mm-hmm. do uh, what you can do. Uh, you, have to, you have to be engaged with your children. And, and don't do it in a scary you know, way. Want, like, Just, go ahead. Like, I, the, what, the, the, you basically were, you were touching on what I was going to say. You know, you don't, you, nobody wants to hurt their child's innocence and have them be fearful. But at the same time, children can keep themselves safe if you teach them. Give them the tools to keep themselves safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, so this is, absolutely. I think this is really, and we're not going to end on this. Because this is so good, I, it, it, this is the information that she's giving. It's even enlightening to me. It's things that I had totally forgotten because uh, sometimes I think as because we're going back to this is families, period, not just black families, but in black homes, 
you're you're so busy all the time and you're trying to work and then the money is not stretching the way that you're having to stretch it and as not to have them always be afraid of of not uh having but you want to tell them we don't have this right now but we can do x y and z there are things that you have mm-hmm. to know about your children because they're learning you and but at the same time i remember um I didn't know that I was squinting because I, I have astigmatism. And I didn't know that when I, sometimes when I talk, I, my eyes would squint until Tiffany uh, related to me as, as a child. Because I was like, what are you doing? Why do you keep doing that? And she was doing and I didn't have to ask her that. You know what? Because she was doing what I was doing. And she told me, that, 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 that's what you would do. You know? Mm-hmm. So this, this is what we have to do with our kids. We have to be engaged. And I remember... We were always sitting around the table, and we're gonna. I'm getting on this, but this is a short thing because James is gonna. We're gonna go into this because it's towards the end, and this is where James is gonna pick it up next week. We never had dinner in our room or in front of the television or in front of a game or anywhere else. We always sat at the table, and we sat at the table. We, we uh, can you pass this? Can I get up? May I please, please be excused? And you can get up until they say you were being excused. You, uh, they want to hear about what your day was. What did you do? Well, did somebody say something to you? Did, did you get your grades? Did you do X, Y, and Z? These are things that we need to be, uh, be cognizant of our children and, and stop mm-hmm. allowing the world to get into your mind and not, and and in, disengage and, and and now you're so tired that you don't even know how do you let your child leave and you don't know where where she's going. You know, my parents they yeah. were always and I thought, oh my God, they just want to control me. Why can't I just go? Why do they have to tell me everything? It was only and you think you know everything. I thought I knew everything at seventeen. I th- I thought I knew everything at fourteen. I thought I knew everything. It was only when I got to college and everybody was just like, you know, I was like, I can't wait to, and I didn't realize at 18 you're an adult, but I can't wait till I get 21 because my parents, my parents were not trying to hear. Uh, my mom, I was just like, I was catching around my white kids, my white uh, friends. I was like, I think I just need a break from uh, school because uh, <laughs> I was one of those kids. Uh, I got an award for never missing school. Because guess what? Because my parents weren't going to ever let us go to school, and you weren't going to ever be late. You were going to school. But it was, I was just like, why did they do that? And it was only when I got to college and I started talking to these people, because you can't unring a bell. Once something has happened to you, once someone has done something, it's in your mind forever. And so mm-hmm. I started hearing these girls, how they were going over to their friend's house and their, their father got fresh with them or raped them or doing whatever. And they didn't ne- I was going to say, what did your mom, they, didn't never, they never told their mother. You know, so these are things that we, it's, just because that, uh, as, a, as a young adult, we're pushing you away because we, we don't have no sense. We, don't, we really don't know. We think we knew. I found out at 21 that I didn't know anything. Then I found out at 25, I thought, God, I didn't even know what I thought I knew at 21. And then it was just like, you're, because you, you're going from a child to a young adult to an adult, now you got, once you get out of your parents, I call it covering. I was talking to uh, Tank about this. Once your child gets, I didn't realize how my parents took care of me or uh, kept me covered. When I say covered, I mean under a uh, God. Um, what do you call that? What do we want to call it? We don't want to make it be spooky, but under you, because God tells you if you be in a certain place that He'll keep He'll He'll uh, He'll cover you with His wings. And there are certain things we were covered by our parents' wings. When I finally got out and, and moved on my own, and my dad didn't want me to do that because he was just like, what are you doing? You're going you gonna to leave the house when you're not married, you're not blah, 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 blah. But I still, I was still a dumb dumb. And so you don't, when, once I got out and I realized they re, uh, this is not that. I'm not, 
And I, I called my mother and I called my parents every day when I was in Dallas. And, and I could and it was only a while, it was it took years I realized because I missed that. I missed that uh camaraderie. I missed that that they were if something was going wrong with my car, I knew my dad was gonna see it before I saw it. You know, if something if I was getting uh sassy, like you'll see people my my mother, my grandmother, un unfold your hand. Uncross your legs. Stop. You, you're not going to do it. There's certain things like that. You have to let them know. And then she doesn't tell you not to do it. She told you why she told you not to do it. And so these are things that we're trying to uh, get into you. It's just uh, just get out of the phone sometimes. Go and take your child to, to the beach. Go and take your child to, to, uh, to fishing. Go and take your child to another neighborhood. And go do something so that you all can talk. And they may not want to talk to you at first, but you're going to hit a, you're going to hit a, you're going to hit something that they want to talk about sooner or later. And but they're hearing you, but just not, they're just not responding. They hear you. So I'm going to say no, that. A friend of mine, a friend of mine said that to me. Huh? A friend of mine said that to me. A friend of mine said that something similar to me. She was, because you know, I always, from the time my daughter was born, both my children, mm -hmm. was, I always talked to them. Even when if I was just changing their diaper, I would just, I would talk them through. Okay, we're going to change your diaper now. You know, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason why, you know, at 12 months old, she knows all her body parts because I've been talking to her since she was little. And yeah. they don't, you, just because they don't responding doesn't mean they're not hearing you. They hear everything yes. that you tell them. They're hearing everything. And um, understanding. So they, and they understand. And if they don't understand, you know, you have to try to be aware that how, yes. you, how you speak to them and speak to them in terms that they can understand to make sure that they are yes. getting the message that you want them to get. Um, and yeah. I'm just saying that to say that it's important to, like I said, drill those things into their heads. Because mm -hmm. even if they're rolling their eyes at you, I still remember that stupid song my mom used to make me sing. I haven't lived in that <laughs> house in 30 years, but I know the phone number. <laughs> For sure. For sure. That is so, so funny. Yeah. yeah. So that's all, that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, there is a website for on Amber Alerts, AmberAlert.gov. You can go there and learn about how, how Amber Alerts work um, and how to get those messages out if you need to use the service. So it's AmberAlert.gov. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. good. And that I learned is, a lot today. That is all I have. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I was able to share some of that stuff with you guys. Yes, uh, and we appreciate that. And but we're, we're not going. Uh, we we're gonna go into another subject next week because we're there. What we what we started to tag at the end is something that's going to be uh, imperative, and you knowing your child. And James is gonna he's gonna tag into that next week, and we're all gonna talk about it. But he's gonna um, uh, go, go into it. But I know that we've been on the phone for a bit. But I want to say, and I'm gonna turn it over to Tiffany again. I want. We have gotten to the place that we think that Satan doesn't exist, that God doesn't exist. And I want to implore that you, if you can't give your children, there, there are going to be times that your children are not going to, they're going to need something, and they're not going to be able to get it from you. But if you give them God, you know, it will, it will take them a long way. And I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about just always going to church because God tells you not to set, uh, uh, forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but it's not just in that building. It's you, you're going to have to, so they can have a relationship with God. See, we've always, and I don't even know how to tell you this, I don't ever remember a time that I didn't know who God was. So I want to put that in your heart and in your mind and so that we can uh, be better people. And to and to be mindful of what God has given us, and, and be good stewards over what He has given us. And I'm I'm not gonna keep talking, and I'm gonna tell you all, and um, I'm gonna let Tiffany close it out. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you all that if you get nothing else, you find that relationship with our uh, Lord and Savior, because God is just a it's it's just the title. And you find you find his name if you call him Yahweh. If you call him, he is our creator. He is he is nothing exists without him. If you can get tap into that, we would be so much further than where we are right now. And so I I'm, I'm loving this. I appreciate this. 
I'm going to turn it over to James so she, he can give it to Tiffany, and we're going to let Tiffany close it out. But we love you. Uh, we hope that your week is blessed. I hope God that, that God does a miraculous thing for you. Just oh, go wake up in the morning and ask God just to give you wisdom and the knowledge and whatever it is you need. And, the, and the, when the opportunity o- opens itself up, that you're there, that you have what you need to step into it and go and go a little bit further. And, and on that, I say adieu, and I turn it over uh, to Grandpa. <laughs> All right, but, yeah, I, I want to thank everybody um, on the show today. Uh, a lot of great information. Um, a, a lot of things I, I could take home and actually start spreading the word to other people. So I yes. think that's important, you know, start yeah. sharing the information. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. Just just keep you keep all this stuff at the top of your head, especially when you're dealing with kids, because you want to make sure they're always prepared for whatever situation is going on. You know, and not and not just kids, but also adults as well. Um, keep them informed on what they should do uh, yeah. when, whenever they're leaving out to go somewhere, but whether you might be going to another country or something like that. Mm. You know, that you know keep people informed with what's going on. So you always have somebody kind of checking over your shoulder uh, in, in your time of need. So I think mm-hmm. that's really important. But, yeah. uh, you know, in this life, I believe that we're taught many things, but I challenge you to find what matters the most, and that's Gnosis, and that's really just knowing yourself. Know your past so you can operate in the present to secure the future mm-hmm. you always dreamed of. Tip, tip. All right. Thank you, James. I'll go ahead and take it from here. So, family, thank you for joining us. I hope that I was able to give you some information or that we gave you some information that, you know, can turn your wheels a little bit, get you thinking about some things in a different way. Um, take advantage of those tools and resources that we have given you because uh, they could save you or your child's life. Um, my grandma or, yeah, she always used to tell me, and my mom too, don't ever go anywhere without telling somebody where you're going. Okay. I even tell my coworkers when I'm going to the bathroom because if I'm going longer than five minutes, somebody needs to send a search party for me. Um, <laughs> it's important to let people know, you know, let people yeah. know where you're going and um, reach out to people and use those resources that we have. Um, as always, I want to remind you guys that you can reach us on Facebook at Ties That Bind, face, facebook.com forward slash Ties That Bind or Ties That Bind dot, dot com, or you can also find us on Podbean, which is our podcast there. Yeah. And with that, mm-hmm. have a blessed week, and we will talk to you again soon. Yes, be blessed.